name is Kenneth Brody. When Lindbergh flew across the ocean, I was seven years old, and from that day on, I wanted to fly. I was a late teenager, and me and my girlfriend, we decided to go out to the airport. They took us up in the, my plane, and, and that was my first time flying. Oh, it felt good to look down on the streets and cars and all that, you know? That's a new experience. All the Air Force recruits were reporting to Alabama, Montgomery, and we started our ground school there. Three months of ground school, then they sent us to Bennettsville, South Carolina, and then we started flying Stearmans. And finally, the Colonel come out and says, I got a special assignment for you two 10 fellows, because you're my 10 best pilots. We had to get on a train and go to a place called Pyot, Texas. We found we were going to be co-pilots on B-17s in going to combat. The name of the air base was Rattlesnake Bomber Base. In fact, when we flew at night, they said, if you got to bail out, don't ever walk around, just stay put. We'll find you, because there's all kinds of rattlesnakes. Oh, I got shipped out to England, and they sent me to Glatton, which is about 90 miles north of London, and I joined the 457th Bomb Group. My first mission, and they announced to me, you're flying the tail gun tomorrow, and I was shocked. I'm not a tail gunner. I'm a pilot or a co-pilot, you know. So I get down there in the morning, and uh, an enlisted man says, you ever shot a 50 caliber machine gun? I said, I've never seen one before. He said, well, here's how you do it. And uh, he says, if you got an ejected shell, you eject it and all that. And he says, don't forget to turn the heaters on because we're gonna be in 50, 60 degrees below zero, and if your machine gun freezes up, you can't fire it. Next mission, I flew with my crew, and we went on a mission into Germany that time. Targets was uh, bridges, factories. Uh, we stayed away from cities. A bomb run of 70, 80 miles long. And while you're in that course, the flak is heavy, but you gotta just take it and go. So, uh, some planes don't make it, others do. One time it was shot up, we counted 50 holes and give up. We didn't count anymore. But we lost engines and stuff like that. And we come back with three engines. And that wasn't too bad, but when you're down to two engines, you just gotta cross the North Sea then it gets kind of worrisome. Uh, there are 10 crews that went over together in uh, convoy, and I think uh, only four crews came back. And we came back seven times without any escort. We had some close calls, but you look for clouds or anything else you can duck into. And we even thought about coming down at tree level and flying back that way. The B-17 was uh, like flying a sport roadster. It was a beautiful plane to fly. And I always felt sorry for the fellows that had to fly the B-24, because they had to work to fly it. And we didn't. I still think we were the lucky ones. In the wintertime, it gets around 80, 90 degrees below zero. Uh, 30,000 feet. We had silk underwear on, then we had wool clothes on, then we had uh, electric flying suit on, and on top of that we had our, our regular uh, uniform on. So we had about four layers of clothes. The French government is going to present Dad with an award um, for his service. Um, particularly for the missions he flew over France. Um, it'll be, a, as I understand, an award from the Legion of Honor for, uh, from, from France. Um, it'll be on Bastille Day on July 14th up in Tampa. 
the consulate in Miami has been in touch with us about this. And we, uh, as we also understand, the ambassador from France, uh, probably from Washington, will be there to present it to him. And all of the siblings um, and three grandchildren will be at the uh, in in Tampa for this. So. Yeah, first time France has awarded me a medal. <laughs>